I'm David Perry. I'm the CEO of Gaikai. It's a Japanese word for meaning the open ocean. And, uh, and our company was acquired by Sony Computer Entertainment, so we now work on the Sony PlayStation. I think my first eureka moment was actually when I was a kid. I started to make video games. Um, now these were really simple video games, like black and white, and you had to type them with a keyboard. There was, there was nowhere that I could buy the games at the time. So you would type them in on a keyboard on a little black and white computer. And um, what happened was I made the games and I sent them to, to magazines to see if they would print them. And the eureka, eureka moment wasn't the fact that I'd got into a magazine. That was just cool. Um, it was when a check arrived. I got like a check for $600 in the mail. And I remember the time just going, what? You can make money from video games? I mean, I could do this all night. And so I literally was night everyone and then I'd be up all night long typing uh, video games. Eureka moment number two. I think is, uh, is this realization that um, I'm originally from Europe, so I, I kind of don't really think about any particular country. I live in the United States. I'm actually now an American citizen. So my sister lives in Australia. I kind of look at the world as just a lot of people and a lot of talent. And so I think Eureka moment number two is, is when you realize that if you can find the right person, the person in the world that is the best at the thing you want, that saves so much time, you know, hiring mediocre people who don't really, not really experts at whatever the subject is. So I think that's something that has literally changed my life is I've got to work with some incredible people, people who've gone on to be very successful in their own right. But the fact is, for a while, I got to borrow their brains and, and have them as part of our team. And I think that's completely changed my, uh, my life as far as a career goes. And I think Eureka moment number three would be um, the idea that, that even if you don't understand something, doesn't mean you can't either learn it or you can't um, absorb it from other people that are really, really smart. I found in no matter what industry I go to, there is always someone willing to share and tell you and explain and teach you. An example is uh, I knew nothing about networking and yet we just sold a networking company for, um, um, for over $300 million. And I mean, literally it started with, I, again, I found some great talent and we ended up, I was building servers on my dining room table. I mean, I knew nothing about servers at the time, but I was building them on my dining room table and I was learning about this, this thing. I, I, recently I've been doing the same thing with woodworking. I got this interest in woodworking, um, just, just something I really wanted to understand. Again. I could buy a magazine here or there, but there's people in, around the world. I found this guy in Tennessee that's unbelievable at teaching woodworking. So I get on a plane, fly to Tennessee, spend a week there, and you, you go from, from, instead of starting and slowly climbing up, I want to get to an 11 as fast as I possibly can. And so you surround yourself with the talent. And I think that's one of the things I love about today and the internet, the possibilities are absolutely endless. I mean, woodworking is just an example. Networking was another example. But what I'm saying is whatever subject in the future that I find interesting, even if I have never even considered it today, it wouldn't stop me diving in with both feet. And I think that's something I would, I would say people should definitely give a try. So a core thing that I, I uh, when I'm trying to think about ideas for companies, when I'm talking to entrepreneurs, what I'm, I have this filter in my head that's constantly looking sort of wondering, are, are they taking the friction out of the industry that they're approaching? Or, or um, whatever it is they're trying to do, are they making that easier? And it doesn't mean dumbing it down or anything like that. It just means making the whole thing easier and less painful. And, and what's surprising is when you take the time to look at just about anything, there's a whole bunch of, of friction and pain and suffering that, that we, people will abuse your time for their benefit. They'll ask you questions when they don't, you know, in forms or whatever, when they really don't need the answer to that. But they'll just put it in there because they don't care about your time. If you're trying to buy a car, it's the same thing. They don't care about your time. And so what, what I love to do is just choose a business. I mean, I, don't, I, I think it would actually be hard to think of, a, of some, some business out there that you couldn't disrupt if you just take the time to look at how they're treating people and their time. And when you see companies out there that are, are, are doing the inverse, they're thinking, how can I make you more productive? 
That's companies like Apple. They're out of their way going, how can we make you more productive? And the answer is, we'll design devices to do that. That is, uh, that is great. But, uh, but I think that's the filter. It's something, whatever you're doing today, whatever, you, whatever pain and suffering you're just accepting because that's the way it is, try to see if you can find a way to improve that.